lunch. Um, I've, uh, I want I want to thank again uh, EBSCO for the lunch, and uh, they're going to do a piece of presentation, uh, discovery for Cohab, but they're going to throw in a few extras from what I hear here. So um, I'd like to introduce uh, Mike McKinnon and David Podboy. They'll take it away here. Hi everyone, can you hear me okay? Uh, so my name is uh, David Podboy. I'm principal library services engineer at EBSCO. I'm joined by my colleague Mike McKinnon, uh, who is the director of SAS innovation with EBSCO. And uh, we're really excited to, to be here today to talk with you about COHA integrations with EBSCO Discovery Service, EBS for short, Publication Finder, uh, and Open Libraries. And I uh, really want to thank Chris and the Cooperative Information Network for inviting us here to speak, to think of us, uh, to invite us. Uh, we've been working with them to integrate EBSCO Discovery Service and Open Athens. Uh, it's about over the last year or so. Uh, so we're excited to, to talk about those products with you. Um, I also work closely with Bywater and our mutual customers. Uh, so it's nice to be here with the Bywater team as well uh, talking about these integrations. I've been with EBSCO for about four and a half uh, years now uh, as a library service engineer. Prior to that, I worked in academic and government libraries for about eight and a half years, uh, working on reference and instruction positions. And actually, in my last two positions, uh, I implemented two different discovery solutions. Um, so I have experience working with discovery solutions from the librarian uh, side of the table uh, as well now from EBSCO. Uh, as a library service, engineer with EBSCO. Um, I do presentations uh, for libraries that are interested in EBSCO Discovery Service and our other SaaS products. Uh, I also meet with current customers uh, to talk about new features, do kind of health check uh, visits. Uh, and then another area that our team works in is uh, integrations. Um, so I've worked on things like our Spring Share integration, and our Stack Map integration, uh, and a colleague of mine, Alvet, in Australia. Uh, has worked on the Koha and the Open Athens Koha uh, plugin integrations that we'll be talking about today. And then I'm going to let Mike come up and do a little bit of an introduction before we get started. Hey, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Mike McKinnon. I'm uh, not a librarian, so I apologize uh, right away. But that said, I've worked in the library industry for the better part of 13 years uh, with multiple businesses. I come from a technology side, so my end will be, and my focus uh, within EBSCO is the partnerships that we have with different software services vendors, as well as the software services that EBSCO builds and supports. So uh, I'll be talking about our partnership with Open Athens. So from an authentication point, uh, we'll look at the Open Athens plugin uh, within Koha. And then depending upon feedback as we get to the end, um, some of you in the room may know EBSCO is championing a project called Folio. Show of hands, some sort of Folio. Okay, if there's interest at the end, I can spend five, ten minutes talking about that. If there's not, that's okay too. So, thanks. I'll talk to you in a minute. So, the uh, agenda for our presentation this afternoon is uh, we're going to start with EBSCO Discovery Service EDS. Uh, makes sense because that is the first integration point that we have with Koha. Uh, then we'll dive into Full Text Finder with Holdings um, Management and Publication Finder. And then Mike will finish up uh, with Open Athens as well. Uh, so there should be time for questions at the end. Um, so if we can just kind of hold those uh, to the end of the presentation, that would be great. So we'll start with EBSCO Discovery Service EDS for short. How many of you have EBSCO Discovery Service in your library? to a couple presentations this morning uh, where some libraries have talked about it. So a few of you do have it. Uh, so some of this might be review for those of you that do have it. Hopefully you'll pick up uh, something new. Uh, for those of you that don't have it, uh, this will hopefully be a good introduction for you. I'm going to start with a little bit of background on what exactly EBS is, and then I'm going to jump into the integrations with Koha. Uh, so bear with me a little bit on the background of what the product is and what it does, uh, and then we'll talk about how does it work. 
So when I meet with libraries to talk about EDS, it usually kind of starts with a conversation around the uh, Today, every library has access to immense amounts of online data, whether that's through your online catalog, whether that's through your electronic resources, your database subscriptions, whether that's through local repositories, uh, digitized collections, whether that's through open access collections that you highlight and make available to your users. But for uh, most libraries uh, in the past, and certainly the libraries that I worked at, uh, what is the primary point of access that we put kind of front and center on our websites for accessing our material? It's the, the library catalog, right? So most libraries, front and center, the search box that we make available is for our library catalog. But most of that immense amount of data that we have access to is not in the online catalog. It's just a small section of it. So this is kind of a typical library website with our, that catalog search box kind of front and center there. And so our users come to the, to the library website and uh, if they don't type in this title, an author, a subject, or maybe they put in a stream of concepts they're looking for. Oh, sorry. Thank you. If I do that again, please let me know. Um, something like Facebook, bullying, social media, teenagers, what's mostly like, likely going to happen if we search in the catalog? We get a message like this, sorry, we couldn't find what you're looking for, even though the library maybe had something on the topic in other parts of their collection. Uh, this next screenshot really resonates for me. Um, so one of the libraries that I worked at was Smith College, uh, which is the liberal arts college of Western Massachusetts. And one of the things that I would hear from students often when I was working at the reference desk is they'd come up to the reference desk and say, oh, I tried to do my research last night. I got to the library's website. I looked at the databases and I didn't know where to start. So maybe some of you that work in academic libraries, you hear similar things from your users. Um, so at Smith, I think we had about 170 databases at the time. So a very long list with funny names that no one knew where to start. We were kind of lucky because we had academic search complete, and that's at the top of the alphabet. So most people would just pick on that because it was the first thing. Um, but that also got me thinking about how many students never came to the reference desk and asked for assistance. They just gave up and went to someone else. Uh, another thing that I saw a lot at the desk was students coming up saying, I need to find journal articles, and I can't find any journal articles in this search. <laughs> and as I mentioned, we have the catalog search box front and center on our library website. So where were they searching for journal articles? In the library catalog. And I thought there's got to be a better way that we can make it easier for our users to access the library's resources. So which is better, this list of databases or one universal index? And that's what EBSCO Discovery Services it is a single search index that pulls in 3.4 billion searchable records, content from over 20,000 publishers and database partners that we work with, uh, including over 3,000 open access publishers. Uh, so it pulls in content from your books, uh, ebooks, databases, uh, institutional repositories, uh, and other resources as well. And so when I talk with libraries, these six kind of areas are what I hear from about what matters most when you're looking in uh, discovery. So, so I'm not going to specifically mention all six of these in my presentation. I'm going to just kind of touch on them, but keep these areas in mind as we talk about as a discovery service. Discovery has to be usable. Research shows that students and library patrons, no surprise, turn to Google first. So when we create and provide access to a discovery solution. We have to make sure that it's easy to use, that it's fast, that it's smart, it's easy to navigate, and it's readable. So hitting on a lot of those, one of the things that I still hear a lot is, oh, that's just better rated search. We looked at that several years ago, uh, and we weren't uh, impressed with it. Uh, but EBSCO Discovery Service is different than better rated search. So let's start with what's wrong with better rated search. And I'm just going to pull up all of these blocks really quick because there's a lot of them. Some of the main things I hear is it's slow. So it's going out in real time and pinging different services and pulling back content. Um, because it's doing in that real time, the relevancy is very limited. Um, because you can't apply relevancy ranking across the data when you're pulling it back in real time. Facets are limited for the same reason. 
The technology used behind federated search uh, is older, uh, so it's hard to maintain. So with EBSCO Discovery Service, we're not doing that federated search. We're working with all those 20,000 publishers that I mentioned uh, to pull their content into a central index, uh, which allows us to return results faster, uh, which allows us to apply relevancy ranking uh, across all of those consistent assets uh, and more. So digging into a little bit more detail about some of the strengths of EBSCO Discovery Service compared to federated search and other technologies. So one area that our strengths are in is our relevance ranking. So these are kind of the pieces of our relevance ranking ingredients list. Uh, and what I want to focus on is metadata field weighting and value ranking. So PDS, we uh, put the most weight on matching on subject headings. And you all know the value of subject headings. They tell us what the item is really about, as opposed to maybe few hits in full text, uh, or maybe an article title that is written in such a way to grab your attention rather than actually um, describe what the article is about. So we put place the most weight on matching on subject headings and controlling audiences. Uh, we, we do match on article titles, and we do match on full text, but there's less weight placed on those areas. Uh, we also have something that we add into that ingredient list called value ranking that has come from years of working with libraries and working with library users and kind of understanding what they're looking for when they come to a search tool. And so one thing that they value is recency currency. So things that are recently published score higher. We look at document type. We look at document length so that quarter page editorial is going to rank lower than that three to four page article. Uh, we also have the ability to weight higher your local library catalog or institutional repository. Another piece of our relevance ranking is enhanced subject precision. This is a new feature that's been out. So I guess it's not new anymore. It's been out for about a little over a year now. But I was really excited when we released this feature. When we look at our search logs, we see that topical searches dominate up to discovery service. Probably doesn't surprise a lot of you or users. But I just mentioned that one of the strengths of EBSCO discovery service is that relevance ranking and that matching on subject headings. Well, when a user enters into the search in EBSCO Discovery Service, it may not always match the same language that's used in those controlled vocabularies. So the user might type in ADHD, where a database might use attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And even between different controlled vocabularies, they might use different terminology for the same concept. Uh, so one might use compulsive gambling as a subject heading. Another one might use pathological so what are we doing on the back end? Uh, so we had our team of taxonomists at EBSCO create a unified subject index. So these are the same people that are creating the controlled vocabularies for our own databases. Uh, they created this unified subject index that matched topical queries from users up to the unified subject index, and then map those unified subject index concepts out to the controlled vocabularies that are available on EBSCO discovery service. So to give you a visual of that, so something like learning aids might then be might be mapped out to educational media in the ERIC database, instructional media in PsychInfo, teaching materials in the MeSH subject headings. So what happens when I search teaching materials in EBSCO Discovery Service? It also matches on the subject headings for teaching aids and devices, uh, as well as instructional materials there. So the user doesn't have to worry about necessarily knowing the correct terminology to use. Uh, we're doing that on the back end trying to make EDS smarter for them. So what happens once they find those citations? Hopefully that relevance ranking is working well and they find what they're looking for. Uh, now they want to get to the full text of the items. Um, there's some ways that we can do that as well to make it easier for users. Uh, one of those ways is with smart linking. Uh, so we have what we call smart links, which uh, <coughs> provide linking between full text in EBSCO databases to the citation. So let's say you have a record in one database in EBSCO Discovery Service, but the full text is available in another EBSCO host database. The smart link will make that PDF or HTML full text just appear on that citation. The user doesn't have to worry about, oh, I need to go over this. <coughs> uh, there's also Smart Links Plus, so if you subscribe to your journal subscriptions through EBSCO, uh, we do a similar thing to link out to the full text on the publisher's sites. Uh, and then we also have custom links. 
So when those partners send us the metadata for ESCO Discovery Service, uh, a lot of times they include uh, information in that metadata to link directly to the full text. And those custom links take advantage of that link of information to seamlessly link users to the full text on that platform. So just to give you a visual, these are all uh, citations from PsychInfo, which is a database that doesn't have any full text in it. But yet I see link full text, I see PDF full text there. Those are those smart links working. So the user doesn't have to figure out where the full text is. We're doing that all behind the scenes for them. And then they can click on the link to go right to PDF. So Koha and EDS. So thank you for your patience on that background of what EDS is. So how does this relate to Koha? So EBSCO uh, has been involved with uh, Koha and other open source in initiatives for, for many years. Um, most recently, we provided funding to, for Koha development. Uh, in 2015, we had a group of, uh, I believe it was libraries in Italy that were using Koha that approached EBSCO to ask if they would be interested in funding uh, development for Koha. So we did provide a grant to help with that. Same in 2016. And going back even a little bit further to 2014, uh, we had a library in New Zealand that was using uh, Koha and they liked EBSCO Discovery <coughs> Service. Uh, they didn't want to send their users to a different interface. They wanted to bring those benefits of EBSCO Discovery Service and all that content that I talked about, that relevance ranking, that smart ranking. They wanted to have that all appear in their Koha interface. So my colleague Alvet, another library services engineer, along with Catalyst IT, uh, worked with this library to develop a plugin for Koha that would allow results from EBSCO Discovery Service to be available in the Koha interface. So what does that mean? All those things that I talked about in the beginning, those 3.4 billion searchable records, that content from 20,000 publishers, pulling in that content from uh, your catalog, your institutional repository, can all be in made available in the Koha interface. I'm going to get in and do a live demo of a couple of sites, uh, but just to show you some screenshots, this is an example of EBSCO Discovery Service, our user interface. This is an example of EDS content in Koha. So it looks like Koha, also looks like EBSCO Discovery Service. Another screenshot of our interface on EBSCO host of the result page, and then again in the Koha. So you can see a lot of those same features and functionality that we see in the EBSCO uh, interface can be available in Koha as well. Uh, so if you Google EDS Koha, uh, one of the first two results will be for the GitHub page for the Koha plugin. Uh, so there's information on the plugin on that page as well as links to presentations from Koha 14, 16, and 17 that Alvet did. I'll highlight a couple of the recent features for the plugin in the last year. So I know a lot of the sites that I've worked with, Bywater has done the installation of the plugin. Um, so this may not be as much interest to some of you, but just to let you know what we've been working on in the back end. Um, the old version of the plugin required patching four files. Uh, so every time Koha was upgraded, it uh, disabled those upgrades as patches and so you had to re-enable the plugin. Uh, we also enhanced the admin section of it as well, including adding some fixes uh, for EBSCO admin setting updates as well to make it easier to pull in the settings from the EBSCO. So enough slides, it's always fun to take a look at some stuff live, so I'm going to jump into couple of live demos here. So this is NIWA. This is that library that we worked with in New Zealand to initially develop uh, the plugin. Uh, they're a, a research institution, um, so you're going to see a lot of content. It's very scholarly in nature, uh, but the indexing for EBSCO Discovery Service can be customized for each library. Uh, so we're going to take a look at some different sites. And so you'll see the content is different in the different sites that we search to search at. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that so you're, uh, if you're in a public library, you're not turned off when you see all these academic scholarly articles come out uh, in the result list. There's your Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, so one of the things that you can choose to do with the plugin is they have it defaulted to search EBSCO Discovery Service. You can have it default to search your catalog and then the user switches to Discovery Service if they want. Uh, they've also chosen to integrate their catalog results into the EBSCO Discovery Service results list. Um, again, you don't have to do this. You can kind of keep them separate if you want, um, but they have everything integrated into a single result list. One of the first things that you'll notice at the top of the result list is research starters. Is the other key? Read the word. Yeah. How's that? A little more. There you go. There we go. Okay is this research starters feature. So it's a good thing that you're all still sitting down. Um, this will come as a surprise to you, but our user research team, uh, they do about 70 plus studies a year across uh, library markets, found that users like to use Wikipedia when they search. Mm -hmm. Big shock. When we dug into that a little bit, besides it's the first thing that comes up in a Google search result, uh, one of the things that we heard from users is they like Wikipedia because it provides background information for them. It gives them a starting point. They like that summary, that table of contents. So what we wanted to do in EBSCO Discovery Service, thinking back to that slide I had earlier about making the discovery smarter and easier for patrons to use, is we wanted to give them a benefit like Wikipedia, but from vetted sources in EBSCO Discovery Service. Uh, so we licensed an encyclopedia entries for EBSCO Discovery Service. Uh, and this feature is available in the Koha plugin as well. As we kind of scroll through the results, uh, again, they've integrated their catalog results into the EDS re result list. Uh, so we see the first couple of records are catalog records, book records, and you kind of see the information that we would expect from those. But as I scroll down a bit, I will come across and see some article results as well. Um, so you can see the matching on the subject headings, so that relevance ranking happening that I mentioned. You also see those PDF full text links appear here in the result list, that smart linking I talked about. So all those benefits and features that I talked about with EBSCO Discovery Service are available if you access it through the uh, We also have our facets on the left side um, from EBSCO Discovery Service so that users can narrow their result list um, based on the information from, from the results that they have by subject type, by source type. Uh, and others as well. You also have this apply equivalent subjects feature. Uh, this is that enhanced subject precision that I was talking about earlier, where we've done that mapping to subject terms across controlled vocabularies. Um, this is a setting that can be defaulted on or off. Uh, they don't have it defaulted on. Uh, you can make that available to your users. So I'm going to purposely spell out. Uh, we also it also pulls in our DigiMean functionality as well. So I misspelled climate change and it'll give me that DigiMean feature that I can click on to rerun my search with the correct spelling. So I'm going to jump in and show another integration point. This is Monterey Public Library. Is anyone in here from Monterey? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> We're showing off your website. Hey. Hey. Um, so Monterey Public Library, they have a catalog tab which goes to Koha interface. Uh, but then they also have an everything tab which goes to EBSCO Discovery Service. So I'm going to search for dishwashers, <coughs> wishing that I could get a dishwasher in my apartment. <laughs> And so what Monterey has done, as opposed to the last site that we looked at, uh, is they're using the EBSCO host interface. How's that? Okay, thanks, Mike. And pulling in the Koha results into the EBSCO discovery service result list. So you can see I get my research starter, uh, and then I have a book from their catalog on how to repair dishwashers. Uh, we can pull in the real-time availability status, so it will tell me in real time if it's 
checked out or available on the shelf. Um, and then I have my uh, results from article databases as well. So consumer reports buying guide, when to get the best deal. So maybe I can buy that dishwasher if I can save some money, good housekeeping, et cetera. So this is another way that EDS and Koha can integrate together. Instead of using the Koha interface, I'm using the EBSCO discovery interface. <coughs> and I'll just go ahead and do another search for yeah. And we see that I get a result from their catalog on the result list. I just wanted to kind of scroll through this result list a little bit towards the bottom. Again, because as I said, the content's going to be different based on every library's index. Uh, but this result list shows that you know one of our partners is Gale, so we have some content from the Gale General One File database. I'm going to show another uh, implementation. This is uh, Marshall County, and we have a couple people from there. Oh, up front, great. Thank you. Hopefully, I'll learn my lesson and make this bigger this time. So a little bit of different approach. Um, so like Monterey, uh, they have some options for their users on their search box. So books, movies, and music goes to their Koha interface. And then articles and research goes to EBSCO Discovery Service. But different from Monterey Public Library, uh, they just have EBSCO Discovery Service searching their article content. So they haven't included their Koha catalog in the result list. So again, three different implementations, three different ways that EBSCO Discovery Service uh, can work with Koha directly, or in this case, alongside. So I'm going to jump in now and talk about Full Text Finder and holdings management and uh, publication binder. Because uh, this was the next point of integration. Uh, we have a lot of libraries that use these uh, in conjunction with EBSCO Discovery Service. Uh, so it made sense to pull that into the integrations that we've done with Koha as well. So just a little bit of background on what this is. Uh, so the full text binder suite includes a knowledge base. This is where you go in and turn on, uh, you know, I subscribe to this particular package or this particular it has a publication search service. So this is where your user would go and say, oh, I want to see if the library subscribes to consumer reports uh, or the Journal of Academic Librarianship. Uh, and then it has a link resolver component uh, where it would take the user from a citation in a database to the full text on uh, wherever that full text might live, whether it's another aggregate database or whether it's directly from the publisher. I'm not going to read through this whole chart, but it talks a little bit about the features and uh, benefits of, of all of those pieces of the text finder. I think you can kind of see the benefits as we look through a couple of screenshots. Um, so these, again, are all in integrations uh, with Koha that you can see. Uh, so this is the exact match placard for publications. So if the library has turned on a publication in their holdings management knowledge base, and the user searches for that particular publication in Koha, in EDS, uh, they get a placard that appears above the results. So you can see the user search for journal group linguistics. You get a placard right above the result list that will allow the user to search within the publication. So if they wanted to see results just from that publication, they can do that. They also have the ability to have immediate direct access to wherever that full text lives. So if the full text was a communication source, they can jump over to that uh, database and access the full text. Uh, full text finder, uh, the link resolver appears on the result list, linking out uh, to wherever the full text content lives. So you can see that full text finder link. I go to the full text finder menu, and then I can go to BioMed Central and access uh, the full text. <coughs> Some of the things that we do on the, the back end uh, to help with that linking are we do we have some enhancements to the data. Um, so when the data comes through, if it's missing things like page numbers, 
for ISSNs. We have some systems on the back end that actually enhance that metadata for open, open URL. Okay. So the more metadata that we have, uh, the better the linking should be through the full text binder. Um, also, in the Koha plugin, uh, there's an option for a journal title search. The way that used to function in the plugin is that it would return articles from that source. So, if I search for ACTA, uh, it would bring me back results from that publication. A new feature in the latest version of the plugin, uh, it actually brings back what we call publication finder. So, it lets your users browse through a list of publications with that name. And then if it's indexed with an EBSCO discovery service, you get that search within publication box. So you can search immediately within that publication. Uh, and then it also has links out to learn that full text. Okay. There's an A to Z bar for browsing as well. A detailed view, the search within uh, boxes there, as well as more information on the publication. And again, that search within box that I've been showing, this gives you an example of what happens if you use that. It is limited to that particular publication. So I did a search within the laboratory animals, and now I'm searching in that publication. So Publication Finder helps your users get to a specific publication that they're looking for. And this is all managed in EBSCO admin. Uh, we have a team of over 20 staff members that work on maintaining our knowledge base, uh, work with publishers to update title lists, update linking as changes are made. So just a little bit of a recap on those features and benefits. But again, the key thing to keep in mind is we're making a lot of that functionality that's available in our interface uh, available through that Koha plugin for users <laughs> that want to, to use the Koha interface. So I'm going to switch it over to Mike to talk about uh, Open Atlas. Okay, so everybody's totally excited about EDS now, right? You have a huge range of collection in your library. It's more than just what's in the catalog. That's the purpose of a tool like EDS, to be able to discover everything the library has access to. A big part of that presentation from David was about linking, right, access to the full text. That's ubiquitous with discovery. If you can discover it but you can't get access, then what's the point? So those kind of go part and parcel with the two services. We spend at EBSCO a lot of resources around knowledge base management, around tools like this to provide users uh, easy access from where they start to where they end. Part of that discussion, though, is with authentication. How many libraries in here use Open Athens as an authentication tool? Two. Okay, how many use Easy Proxy? Lots. How many use WAM from IIII? Web authentication. Okay. Anybody else? Anything? There's some real small ones out there. What do you got? Squid. Okay, you got Squid. So there's there's definitely tools out there in the market. Um, Open Athens is much more known internationally than it is domestically. Uh, it's built by EduServe, which is also the same company that built. Edu Roam, a Wi-Fi service, wireless internet service for a lot of campuses and universities out there. Um, but Open Athens is partnered with EBSCO for marketing and sales services. We do a little bit of project management, product management with them based on feedback from our customers. And that's why I'm here today talking about our partnership with Open Athens. There are some big differences between Easy Proxy, all those people that put their hands up, and WAM versus Open Athens. And that's what I want to really point out today because this is what's happening as the way forward. Other tools like Open Athens that are what are called SAML compliant, right? If you're an in common library, which most of you should be, uh, if you're part of the in common federation, then you also have access to shibboleth servers that are also SAML compliant. Okay, a lot of acronyms there. How many people are technical minded in the authentication space that know what I'm talking about? A handful, okay. SAML basically meaning individual users accounts as opposed to IP authentication, right? Security, secure access markup language is what SAML stands for. We're gonna talk about that at a product level in a second. So Open Athens, again, largely known internationally, not necessarily domestic. 
and you can see the reach that we've had. Um, EBSCO has been partnered with them now for a couple years, and I really think that probably at least for me, I, I cover about half of this continent, so for me, uh, more and more of my conversations are about Open Athens, uh, probably as by comparative to what they were about EDS in the past. Um, and some of that is because this is what libraries really need to, this is a gap that libraries have. They really need to start understanding the authentication component, information about their patrons. Are they sitting in my parking lot using my Wi-Fi and not in the library? Or are they in my library and they're a faculty member or an underclassman if you're in an academic space? How do I understand my patron behavior regardless of my counter stats, right, that aren't telling me anything other than my br ones TV reports? This will help. Open Athens will help on some of that. At its base, Open Athens, though, is a single sign-on solution. It is an authentication solution. So how do we differentiate from easy proxy and IP auth 